Before you begin your own scale and sphere, I strongly recommend, highly recommend that you do some practices on a separate sheet of paper. Once you're confident with your practice, your little scrap piece of paper that you play around with, now you can go ahead and place in the value scale. So value scale comes first. I need to place down my hue and I wanna change it up a bit. You see in my, my experimenting, I've kind of reversed a couple of things. So my green is not exactly the same as what we did on the worksheet. I mean, it's the same two pencils, but instead of having my yellow green placed down first, I'm putting my green down first. That's my green pencil. And then I'm gonna put on my yellow green. I just wanted to reverse it to see what it looked like, what kind of green I can get if I um, change the layers alternated that and I liked it so I'm going to, st going to stick with it. So my hue is green for my cool color. Our sketchbook paper has texture to it. It has a different feeling than your printer paper. That printer paper was smooth so it helped you eliminate that staticky appearance. You will find that even though you're being careful and you're layering it smoothly that there's going to be a slight static appearance to everything you place down from your scale to your sphere to the background. Um, so just keep that in mind. Don't put a lot of pressure because you get frustrated with that look. It's natural. You're going to, it's going to shine through. So just know this and avoid adding heavy texture or excuse me, heavy pressure, heavy layers, trying to eliminate that because it's going to give you that waxy appearance that we're trying to avoid. And um, yeah, just, Take your time and know that that's the nature of the paper. In the last tutorial, I showed you a couple of options to help you achieve your tones with complements and cool colors or a combination of the two. I'm going to keep this scale simple and I'm just going to use cool colors. So I'm putting sky blue in for my first block. I will put blue into the second one and then I will end it with purple in the third block for this tone section. Okay, so remember I've reversed the hue blend, the color blends 
that was practiced in the worksheet and I want to place my dark green down first because I want that yellow green to be my main color. So I'm going through and placing in my dark green and then I'll finish this area off with a layer or a few layers of my yellow green to get it to transition. And yes, by the way, I'm a cheaty cheater. I know that we've talked about yellow green being more of a warm color, but I really like it. I wanted to see what it would look like as my cool sphere and I'm sticking to it. It's cool enough. And um, that's all part of the fun of creating your own colors. You can kind of play around and find out what you like. And I haven't really pressed down very hard at all up until I got to this one I just finished off. Just trying to get some of that static appearance out, but you can already, you can see, you can see that difference that I'm talking about because this paper has texture to it. Even though I'm taking my time and I'm adding multiple layers, there's going to have, it's going to have that static appearance. I don't know what else to call it. It has that, it's not a scratchy look, it's like a static look okay i can't think of another word if you can let me know but that's what it looks like and it's going to happen so just embrace it Okay, you already know how to do tints, so I'm going to speed this up. Just a um, quick reminder, if in doubt, you can continue that tip I gave you of doing three layers, then two layers, then one layer from right to left with your two color blends or your two pencils that you're using to blend. And then end it off with an increased amount of white.
So that was step one, we're on to step two. I've practiced my value scale to represent the colors that I'm going to use for my sphere. Now I need to do the background. We're going to leave the sphere for last. So the table color, I mentioned that it had to be a complement of your sphere. So mine is green. The complement of that is red. So red is going to be used for my table. I need a second pencil. So I've decided to use red orange because it's a similar hue to what I'm going to place down for my table, the red. You have to place down the red orange first. That's my blend color. It's going to help me conceal as much of that staticky look as possible and give me a richer hue, a richer blend. So this is gonna take some patience. You have to do that whole table surface. So take your time, do smooth blendings and get rid of any of your white patches. Notice also I gave myself a cast shadow already, but I am avoiding that space for now. I'm gonna leave that part white. We will address it after we complete the sphere. So make sure you draw a space there to represent your shadow and leave it alone until the end, okay? We're going to leave that white for now. Slowing it back down so you can see me work in real time on this. This whole thing in total took me maybe 45, about 45 minutes. Um, so I've shortened it a little bit from speeding up. So just know that that's the approximate amount of time it's going to take. Each area takes about five or 10 minutes to complete. So just pace yourself and be aware that it's going to take a while. Okay, I am just about done with my red orange. Now that I have that nicely placed in, it's time to go back over it with my red because my table needs to end in red. That's my complement to my green sphere. So same, same thing, just take your time. Make sure that you pay attention to where you place this, this pencil down, especially if you're following along with my color and cover up that red orange all the way completely.
Rotate your paper if you have to. If you know how to do that circular motion very well, you should have no issues with this creating any patchwork or weird directional lines. You see that I even have some a little bit, but you need to make sure that you go back and kind of correct them. Um, keep your pencil sharp. That's another very, very important thing to make sure that your blends work or go in very well. And um, almost done with this section. The wall is going to be a similar process of layering your first color down completely and then finishing it off with your second color. Done with the table, I'm just cleaning up a few places and now I need to determine the color for my wall. My sphere is green. The table complements that by having red there. Now I need to find an analogous color that neighbors the red. So I can pick any six of these colors I'm pointing to. I'm going to choose yellow orange. Tertiary means that a primary and secondary Color have been mixed, blended together to create a third color. So my yellow orange is made up of yellow and orange, a primary and a secondary. Yellow is my dominant color, that's why it's placed first in this hyphenated word. So on my paper, I color the orange in first, then I place the yellow on top in order to create my yellow orange hue.
I know you'll be tempted to push this further and really darken this yellow orange and this red table, but don't do it, okay? I was able to achieve it in my mini one because it's such a small scale, but when you move up to a larger scale with Crayola and this type of paper, I say it's better to play it safe and keep your colors at this level. We're on to the last bit of this practice. So we need to place our cool colors down first before we can end this off in our green for the full sphere. So I'm placing down the darkest color first and moving up to my lightest color for my, my cool pencil. So this color I'm placing in right now is purple. I will place in a good amount to represent my darkest shadow on the right side of my sphere. And then I will transition to my blue pencil. And then for my blue pencil, I will use my sky blue pencil to show that dark to light transition. So I'm placing down my blue color now and notice not only am I placing this color into the white spaces, I'm also going back and forth and kind of blending this, this color in between the blue area and the purple area to kind of conceal that hard line. So you'll notice I'm pushing and pulling. Um, you might even want to have that other pencil handy, the purple pencil, to kind of help you conceal that heart line a little bit more if that blue one's not doing the trick. Just make sure that that transition turns out as a soft one. And also make sure that no matter the colors you're placing down, they all curve to represent that curved spherical look. So the practice worksheet was very helpful because we also learned how to do value transitions with one pencil going from dark to light or light to dark. So even though we are changing this up and using three different colors right now, purple, blue, sky blue, that practice from the worksheet should have helped you understand how many layers, how much pressure should be used to achieve a nice soft transition of value from dark to light to create this sphere. So notice I'm placing my sky blue. This is my last cool color I'm placing in, making sure I'm rounding it off, tapering it out on the left side, leaving a white space in the middle. I kind of go in and do a very, very light value in that center, but you want to leave it as white as possible. Um, now that I had these placed, I'm just checking to make sure I'm happy with the push in values. And then I will go ahead and place my green down on top and then my yellow green. No heavy pressure is being used to achieve the colors that I'm going to place in. I am taking my time, I am layering it, and going back and forth to conceal all of these cool colors. So by the end of this, it should appear as a green sphere. So just keep your circular motions moving to help you blend these colors all together, help you conceal all of those blues and purples and avoid having that heavy pressure because it's better to build because there's no taking it away if you make a mistake. So be careful.
My sphere has a slightly blue tint with it, but I'm okay with that. Um, I know how to conceal it. Before you move on to your final pencil, I'm about to pick up my yellow green and finish this off. But before you do, I want you to make sure that your cool colors are concealed as much as possible. It should be completely, but if there's a slight, slight tint to it of those cool shining through, it should be okay if you're using a medium or darker hue for your sphere. I would avoid that, that issue with any lighter color. So if you're doing a yellow sphere or a pink sphere or a baby blue sphere, you should, you're one of those students who should make sure that you conceal all of those cool colors before you put on your final hues because they will shine through when you're working with lighter colors. My pencils are a little bit darker. I've chosen green, it's a slightly darker hue. So I know that I could um, kind of take that risk and finish this off with my yellow green. almost finished placing my green hue down. Notice I've intentionally left that space white at the top left because my light source is there. I'm slightly going in and placing my green with a very, very light value. And then we need to tint this area out. So I'm just tapering this off, placing a little bit more yellow green in the center, but I don't want to take away that brightness. And then I'll use my pencil to blend that area in to create my tint. Finally, moving on to the shadow. So you need your cool colors that you use for your sphere, your sphere colors that you used for your sphere, and you need the colors you used for your table. Pretty much all the colors you've used for this exercise, put them to the side, you're going to pick them up. I'm placing down the purple first. Remember, we're not doing black for these shadows. We want to have a rich shadow. So I'm placing down my cool colors, placing in purple, darkest towards the sphere, lightening it up as it comes out away from the sphere. Then I'm going to place in my blue. And then I'll end it and kind of place my sky blue in there, kind of midway, and it'll fade out to the, the right side. I know it looks strange right now, but bear with me. We're going to now place our red orange on top. My table's red, so make sure that red orange goes down underneath. Doing circular motions, making sure that that blue gets concealed. We're creating a toned area for our cast shadow. So I'm gonna do full coverage on this and then I will take my red pencil and cover this area up as well.
that shadow turned out pretty dramatic. So I'm just taking one more layer of red to darken this table just a little bit more so it's not so bright in comparison to the shadow I've given my sphere. So just cover it one more time, making sure you don't leave any patchiness behind, fixing any edges, and we're done with this. So just keep watching till the end. I'm just cleaning it up, cleaning it up a bit. And we are finished with this. So this is my cool sphere. You guys will complete a cool sphere and a warm sphere. The colors are your choice. Whatever you decide to do, just please make sure that you do a couple of mini practices first, especially with the value scale and how you're going to place in your cool colors on that sphere to make it look very realistic. So you see all the little practices I did. I even made a few mistakes. My greens look crazy, but I finally got it right. I've practiced a couple of spheres to be sure that I was confident with putting it into my final. And just have fun with it, guys.